Hi again, everyone. Gary Digital Williams here on Boxing on the Beltway Podcast Network, our final podcast for 2020. And it's good to be back on after a week off. Hope everyone had a very nice holiday, nice Christmas, and looking forward to a very happy and hopefully much better 2021. Hope to do that as well. Of course, the Boxing on the Beltway Podcast Network can be heard on many different platforms, including Spreaker and Stitcher and iHeartRadio and Google Podcasts. Podcast Addict, we're on Spotify, and we're on TuneIn as well. So you might want to, to listen at any any place you can find the Box on Boy Podcast Network. Now, this indeed will be our final podcast of 2020. It's going to be pretty busy this week because we have a lot of results from this past week, including a big one that took place this uh, this past Saturday, an excellent performance. We'll talk more about that. We're we'll giving also a busy January schedule, getting off to a good start. Not in the area so much, but a number of Beltway boxers have been able to find some bouts, um, primarily on the East Coast, uh, a couple on, on the West Coast, but uh, a lot to be found there. And then we're going to pay so a lot. So we're going to talk about a busy January schedule. And then we're going to pay tribute to truly one of the, fa- the true fallen warriors of this business. This is a man that he once told me, told me personally, that boxing is his job and he loves his job. And that statement that he's made, he made it many times throughout his career in many different interviews, may have come back to be his epitaph, so to speak, because um, because of the way he passed away. So we're going to talk about that this week as well. The Box on Bowie Podcast Network brought to you as always by Real Time Pain Relief. From boxers to ballerinas, for shoulder pain and muscle strain, anything in between, boxing along the Beltway recommends Real Time Pain Relief, the natural, plant based, safe, fast, and effective ointment. You go to freepainoffer.com, buy $10 worth of Real Time Pain Relief, you get a free $10 tube of Real Time Pain Relief. Now made famous and, and, and endorsed by two-time World Heavyweight Champion Big George Foreman. So try his knockout formula for real-time pain relief. Rub it on. The pain is gone in real time. And by DebraSpears.com. She has great weight loss tips and great jewelry. Also great training methods at Debra, D-E-B-R-A Spears.com. Well, of course, the big win of the week took place on Saturday, December 26th at the Shrine Auditorium Expo Hall in Los Angeles, California. And I think next to Javante Davis's knockout over Leo Santa Cruz earlier this year, this may be the biggest win of the year. And it came from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, Super Middleweight, Alante Slides of Fox. He won a 10-round unanimous decision over Marcos Madman Hernandez on Saturday at the Shrine Auditorium Expo Hall in Los Angeles, California. This was a bout that was on a PBC fight night. In fact, it was the headlining bout on a PBC fight night on FS1 and Fox Deportes. This is before a card that took place at the same location on Fox Television. Now, in the fourth round of this bout, these boxers clashed heads and Fox suffered a cut over his left eye. Now, in some cases, it may have uh, had, had rattled him and may have caused him to go off his game plan. Well, in this particular case, Fox went back to his game plan. I mean, in fact, he went. He actually went to a game plan. In other words, he was not... Early in the fight, he was trying to fight inside. And, and of course, Alantes Fox being six foot five, he has no reason to fight inside with just about anybody, really. And so what he did was he went to the jab and he just jabbed his way all the way through the rest of the bout and he pretty much controlled the bout to to win the bout by scores of 96-94, 97-93, and 98-92. So great work by the corner. Of course, uh, Troy Fox, Alonso's father, is the main trainer there. Probably Michael Michael Fessel Fox is probably there was there as well, I should say. And to see Alantes really control the bout from the fourth round on, because the cut took place in the fourth round. It really was great to see. So it was a wonderful win for Alantes Fox, who's now 27-2-1, 12 KOs, while Nandez falls to 14-4-1, 3 KOs. We've got some news, some possible news, about Alantes Fox later on in this podcast. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So congratulations. Big win for Alantes Fox out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Meanwhile, on December 19th, which was a Saturday, December 19th, at the 
Escape Ballroom in Greenville, South Carolina. Laurel, Maryland, Super Middleweight, Mansabori, the Punisher Conde. He won his professional debut. He's going a third round TKO over Ricardo Vasquez Becerril of Kingston, North Carolina. Conde just swarmed Becerril throughout the bout. He landed nice head and body shots, then a nice left hand to the body. Finished about at 138 of the third round. So congratulations to Mansabori Conde. He's been around the... Uh, Amateurs for a long time, so great to see him as a pro now. 1 0, 1 KO. Besserio falls to 1 4 and 1 with 1 KO. So, congratulations to Monster Boy Conde. Meanwhile, on December the 9th, this was about that, that we didn't talk, that we um, talked about a little bit earlier, but uh, didn't get a chance to talk about to finish it because of, um, because of the Christmas holiday. But congratulations to uh, Antonio Another Russell winning a seventh round technical knock. Technical decision, excuse me, over former world champion Juan Carlos Payano of Miami, Florida, by way of Dominican Republic. Bout was shown on Showtime. Now, the two men clashed heads in the fifth round, leading to a nasty cut over Payano's left eye. Bout would be halted one second into the seventh round. Russell was leading on the scorecards 58 56 and 59 55 twice. So, with the win, Russell remains undefeated. He's 18 0, 12 KO. Payano falls to 21 and 5, 9 KOs. And again, it's been a real tough week. I think we talked about this about actually last week, but I do want to emphasize it because uh, it's been a tough, tough couple of weeks for the Russell family. They lost uh, one of the brothers, one of the non boxing brothers, and his um, funeral, I believe, will be tomorrow, as we record this Wednesday, December uh, 29th. December, um, yes, December 30th, excuse me, December 30th will be his funeral, uh, Busa. Uh, Gary Derrick Russell. Uh, so been a tough week for the Russell family. So I just wanted to highlight that, that bout once again. And also congratulations to Alexander Virginia middleweight Brandon Bulldog Quarles. He scored a third round TKO over Lauro Alcantar of Agua Preta, Sonora, Mexico back on Friday, December 18th at the Gimnasio Profit Cross in Agua Preta. This is Quarles' first bout in more than a year. He spent that time recovering from a near fatal a motorcycle accident. And of course, um, it's been a real tough couple of, uh, really a couple of years for, for Brandon Quarles because his mother passed away and now he almost, he almost passed away through this motorcycle accident. He came back and he came back strong. Quarles sent Alcantar to the canvas in the first and the second rounds for a nice body shot. It was a really nice, I got a chance to see the footage on this. Nice body shot earns Quarles the stoppage in the third round. Quarles now has a record of 22, 5, and 1, 11 KOs. Alcantar falls to 9, 10, and 1 with 1 KO. So once again, congratulations to Brandon Quarles out of Alexander, Virginia, the Bulldogs. So a very successful week for Beltway Boxers to end 2020. So congratulations to everybody who has won bouts. So now we move into January. And uh, the schedule is actually pretty busy as far as boxers concerned, not necessarily as far as locations here in the beltway but uh boxes will be in motion during the course of 20 the beginning of 2021 so let's start with saturday january the 2nd at the american airlines center in dallas texas and that's where the wbc female super middleweight champion franchon cruz de Zern of baltimore maryland she'll be in a non-title eight round bout against alicia ashley excuse me ashley curry of st joseph's missouri now, Cruz Zern is 6-1 with two KOs. She received that title back, that WBC Super Midway title back, when her 10-round split decision lost to Alejandra uh, Jimenez back on January 11th in San Antonio, Texas, was changed to a no decision because Jimenez had pro- tested positive for a banned substance. So it's good to see that uh, Cruz Zern is back as champion in a non-title bout against Ashley Curry. Ashley Curry is 8, 13, and 4, 1 KO. She hasn't fought since October 2019 when she lost by third round TKO to Savannah Marshall in Newcastle, England. Now, I, I got a chance to see Ashley Curry a few years ago, I believe back in 2014, where she fought Melissa St. Ville at Martins Valley Mansion in Cockersville, Maryland, and it went to a uh, split decision draw. So it was a pretty good fight, too. That was a good fight there. But uh, so that's the last time I had a chance to see Ashley Curry. But uh, good to see French on Cruz Zern back in business. And we'll see what happens as she goes forward. That's Saturday, January 2nd at the American Airlines Center, Dallas, Texas. French on Cruz Zern goes up against Ashley Curry, a non-title eight-round bout. 
On Saturday, January the 16th at the Elevations Event Center in Chester, Pennsylvania, a couple of Beltway boxers that moved into the Beltway recently. Um, again, boxers I've never seen in the Beltway, but they have represented the Beltway over the last few bouts. The Mercy Elephant Ninzao, Ninzao will be in a six-round contest against Shenard Bunch of Trenton, New Jersey. Ninzao is a native of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He's 11 and 13, eight KOs, and he is trying to break a nine-bout losing streak. That includes a four-round unanimous decision loss to Diane Butt. That was on November 7th in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Bunch is 10 and 1, 9 KOs. He's knocked out six of his last seven opponents. He had a knockout in the Beltway a couple years ago. And he, his last bout was a first round knockout of Christian Danilo Guido on November 7th in Rock Hill, South Carolina. So Dean Mercy, um, Elephant Inzow will be back in action. Uh, again, Shenard Bunch on this card at the Elevation Event Center in Chester, Pennsylvania. Also in this card will be Annapolis, Maryland, super lightweight, David the Demolisher Veris Pena, Pena. He'll be in a four-round bout against Tamir Smalls of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, Pena, unfortunately, has not demolished anybody. He's still looking for his first win. He's 0-3-1. He last fought on November 7th in Philadelphia, that same card, I believe it was at the 2300 Arena in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Lost by first round knock TKO to Nafir Charles. Smalls is 2 0, both his wins by knockout. He scored a fourth round knockout of Kaiwan Sistrunk. That was on February 29th at the Powell Center in Hawkinson, Delaware. So that's two of the box. Two boxes will be on this card at the Elevation Event Center in Chester, Pennsylvania. The Mercy Elephant Inzal and also David the Demolisher Veris Pena. Also on Saturday, January 16th, and this bout will be at the Washington County Fairgrounds in Washington, Pennsylvania. And this card will actually probably be as close to a beltway card that we will see in January. Um, primarily because the matchmaker for the card is our good buddy Brian Dillon. And also uh, Derek Jonta, who's been, who's been a good friend of mine over the years. Uh, worked in this area for a while, but now he's... Uh, working out of Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh area, and he's also uh, managing boxers, and he's promoting this card here at the Washington County Fairgrounds. But a number of Beltway boxers will be on this card. First of all, Lusby Maryland Super Featherweight, Nathaniel Lee, ASAP Davis. He'll be in a four-round contest against Johnny Spell of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Davis is 2-1, and one, one KO, coming off a four-round majority decision win over Veron Webb. That was on February 9th at, at the uh, Dulles Sportsplex in Vienna, Virginia. No, I'm sorry, that was at Tyson's Playground in Vienna, Virginia. Excuse me, Tyson's Playground in Vienna, Virginia. Spell is 2-0, and oh, both his wins by knockout. He's not far since December of 19, though, 2019, when he scored a first-round knockout, TKO, over Philip Ryan Carroll in Salem, West Virginia. So Nathaniel Lee, ASAP Davis, good boxer. I like him. I like watching him. So he'll be in a bout against um, Johnny Spell of Pittsburgh. Clinton, Maryland, featherweight, Jay Stansel III. He'll be in a four-round contest against the opponent to be determined. Stansel's undefeated, 2-0, 1 KO. Coming off a first-round TKO of Antonio Lucane. That was on February 28th at the uh, Horseshoe Casino. I'm sorry, not the Horseshoe Casino. Uh, in the Live Casino in Hanover, Maryland. Live Casino in Hanover, Maryland, where that bout took place. So Jay Stansel III getting ready to uh, perform once again. Suitland, Maryland, Melway, Devon Boone. He'll be in a four-rounder against Eric Lomax of Pittsburgh. Boone is one and two, lost four, both his losses bout by four-round unanimous decision. Last bout to Javel Joseph on February 8th in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Meanwhile, Lomax is two and oh, one knockout. Scored a second-round TKO over Ryan McIntosh on March 7th in Cheswick, Pennsylvania. And then we have two Beltway boxers going at it. Glenn Burney, Maryland, super, middle, super welterweight, Dwayne Thompson II. He'll be in a four-round bout against Leonidas Folks of Winchester, Virginia, by way of Baltimore. Thompson is 1-0, 1 KO, won his pro debut on October 31st, first-round TKO of Xavier Ford in Columbia, South Carolina. Folks also won his uh, pro debut. He captured a four-round majority decision over Adrian Diaz in Parkersburg, West Virginia, on November the 7th. So uh, let's see. That's one, two, three, five, uh, five uh, Beltway boxers scheduled to be on this card on Saturday, January the 16th. That'll be at the Washington County Fairgrounds in Washington, Pennsylvania. And then we come back to the news on Alantes Fox. Now, this one 
given what it, what happened on this past Saturday, might be a little on the iffy side going forward. I'll tell you why. This bout is scheduled for Saturday, January the 30th at the Shrine, once again, the Shrine Exhibition, Expo Hall, Exhibition Center in Los Angeles, California. Up at Marlboro, Maryland, Super Midway, Alantez Fox, scheduled to be in another 10-round contest against undefeated Jose Armando Resendiz of Compostela, Nayarit, Mexico. Okay? Now, Fox, coming off that big win, we talked about the fact that he had a cut over his left eye. According to BoxRec, which is the the expert site on this, Fox has been suspended by the California State Athletic Commission until February 24th. So there's a chance that this bout will not take place. And chances, I think, better than 50-50 in all honesty. Uh, I guess a lot has to depend on how the the, uh, cut is going to heal. Um if it heals well enough to fight. This will be a big opportunity for Fox, though, because it's a co-feature to the bout between, I believe it's Caleb Plant and Caleb Truax, and it's going to be on Fox Sports, not on Fox FS1. It's going to be on actual Fox. So it'll be a big opportunity for Lantez, but whether or not he'll be able to do it, I don't know. Uh, let's tell you a little bit about Rent Cindy's, though. Cindy's 11 and 08 KOs, competing for the first time in the United States. He won all his previous bouts in his native Mexico. So it'd be a good opportunity for Fox. We could do it, but with the cut and everything, and again, California, California suspended Alantes Fox till February 24th. It's iffy. Let's just say it's iffy. So we'll just keep it on the schedule until we know otherwise. That is on Saturday, January 30th from the Shrine Expedition Center in Los Angeles, California. Alantes Fox scheduled to take on Jose Armando Resendez in a 10-round bout. So we'll see. Now, there is one card that is scheduled, and I do emphasize the word scheduled, to be in the beltway. It's scheduled to be on Saturday, January 30th, at the Dulles Sportsplex in Sterling, Virginia. It's a ponytail promotions card. James Hogan doing it. Matchmaker Brian Dillon once again. The card is scheduled to feature Dante Cox, uh, Joel Flores, Calvin Menz, and Deontay Burtz. But again, given the restrictions that have been going on throughout the Beltway area as a whole, Virginia's really been strict over the last few months. Um, I I would hesitate to believe that bout's going to take that card's going to take place. If it does take place, of course, it'll be the first card without our uh, beloved Tracy Fagan, who passed away uh, back in back in early December. Um, that's going to be you know really interesting to see. And really kind of tough to see Perfect Yonza to be there without Tracy being there. So, like I said, it's iffy because of the restrictions. So, we'll see what happens. Um, That's scheduled for Saturday, January 30th at the Dulles Sportsplex in Sterling, Virginia. be our first card in the Beltway since February 28th when uh, Tony Jetta Promotions had their uh, bout at uh, Live Casino in Hanover, Maryland. So, that's the schedule for this coming month. Uh, Again, it's going to be a... um, this is going to be a very interesting year going forward to see how the Beltway does does its business throughout the year coming up, if they can do good business throughout the year. So we'll just have to wait and see. Finally, um, we're going to do a tribute this week to, again, true one of the true warriors of this business. And again, the fact that he was such a warrior may have, Caused, caused his passing at a, at the early age of 59 years old. Back on December 23rd, we got the sad word that Frankie the Surgeon Randall, really one of the great boxers in my time, um, uh, passed away. And he passed away of pugilistica dementia, hope I pronounced that right, and also, uh, I believe it was Parkinson's disease. And again, you look at his career, he started his career way back in 1983, and quite frankly, he really, I think he took like one year, 1990, he didn't fight. And he really fought all the way until 2005 was his last fight. Um, of course, he'll always be remembered for his win on January the 29th, 1994, becoming the first man to beat uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, who was undefeated, 81 and old at the time. And uh, Randall beat him. I split the decision. How it was a split decision? I do not know. Uh, Randall knocked down Chavez in the eleventh round, and I remember I watched that fight recently, 
And it was a great, great knockdown. No question. Uh, they would meet two times again, two times after that. Chavez won the second one. Again, I think, I think Randall got robbed in that one back in May of 1994. And then they would fight late in, in Randall's career in May of 2004. And uh, Chavez won a 12-round unanimous decision. But he fought, Frankie Randall fought some great boxers. I mean, look at his career. Edwin Rosario, he fought, uh, of course, he won his second world title against Juan Martin Koji, who was a very good boxer. He fought, he lost his bout to, he lost his, his that title to Khalid Raleigh, and then Sean Bay Mitchell would win the title from Raleigh after that. Obacar, he fought. He fought uh, Juan Antonio, Jose Antonio Rivera. He fought Peter Manfredo. He fought, uh, oh, just some great boxers. Freddie Pendleton. You know, he fought Edwin Zaro twice, fought Pendleton twice. You know, just looking at his career, he fought some really, really great people. He also fought our own Willie the Heat Taylor back in June of 1983. But, you know, it was just, he, he got the impression this was a guy that fought too much. And he, like I said, I, I met him. Let me go back to the time when I met him. I met him in February, I'm sorry, in um, in early April of 1995. This is during the uh, weeks leading up to the Beltway Brawl, the bout between um, si- uh, Vincent Petway and Simon Brown. And, you know, it was a Don King promoted fight. Frankie Randall's Don King promotion, promoted boxer at the time. And had a chance to talk to him and do an interview with him for my Boxing Spotlight TV series. And he was really just a class act, first of all. He was a classy guy, really nice, friendly guy. And we, after he talked, he did a great job promoting the bout, promoting the card that he wasn't on. He wasn't on the uh, Beltway Brawl. But he talked about all the local guys. I mean, we had so many local guys on that card. And he even mentioned Tim the Bama Hilly, which which is amazing, amazing to me because, again, Hilly wasn't, wasn't one of our. He was on the good, good box. He was on the on the card. He ended up not being one of our legendary boxers. He was a character, no question about that. But the fact that Frankie Randall knew him, knew he had a gym, which he did at the time, Ringmaster Gym, and it was a great, great just to hear him promote the bout and people ought to come see it. All these local guys are on the card, so come out and support him. You know, it was great. It was great to hear it. And then we talked about uh, Randall's career, and of course, he said the highlight was him beating Chavez, and then uh, the, the the loss of Chavez was a downer for a few minutes, and then he got back to work, beat Koji, and you know, it just went on to his career. And then he said those words: "Boxing is my job, and I love my job." And you listen to a lot of the interviews that he had over that over his career. He said that in some way, shape, or form. And so it's sad that he, who loved his job, at job and was so successful at his job, that he would, in essence, kind of lose his life because of the job. And it, it was sad to hear; it really was. By the way, he did fight here in the Beltway once. He fought here on in October of two thousand one. Fought at Fight Night, Fight Night two thousand one. And lost a ten round, eight round stoppage to Chantel Stancy. I think I remember that bout. Actually, I was at that at that bout. And Chantel Stancy, who I believe was out of North Carolina, he was a good boxer, and um, he knocked out Frankie Randall that night. But uh, you know, he fought maybe a little bit too much, and he fought tough fights. He didn't fight any easy fights. You know, he he fought a lot of tough fights, and that was just because he was just a warrior. He was a true warrior and would take on anybody and and compete against anybody and he was a real tough guy I, I, i'm repeating myself a lot because I, there's no other way to describe him except except frankie randall was a tough dude he was a really tough dude when it, when it came to in-ring competition and so we're definitely gonna be missed he's gonna be missed he was a great great guy great fighter and Frankie Randall passed away on December 23rd at the age of 59. So really tough loss for all of us in the belt, in the boxing scene. Well, that will do it for another edition of the Boxing on Beltway Podcast Network. Once again, the Boxing on Beltway Podcast Network brought to you by Real-Time Pain Relief. You go to freepainoffer.com, buy $10 worth of real-time pain relief. You get a free $10 tube of real-time pain relief. Rub it on. 
The pain is gone in real time. And by DebraSpears.com. Great weight loss tips. Great jewelry. Great training methods as well. At Debra. D-E-B-R-A Spears.com. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Gary Digital Williams. I thank you for all your support throughout the year. And look forward to that same support in 2021. Wish you happiness throughout the year. Have a very pleasant new year. Until then, thank you for joining us. Always remember to keep supporting the best boxing in the world. The boxing along the beltway. Thanks for listening. Take care. Oh, beautiful right hand by Dale Coley.